Hello there, friends on Facebook and Twitter and other places. I'm glad you've tuned in today. I hope you'll stay tuned for just a few moments. I want to talk to you today about building strong families. I always think about this when someone calls and asks me to come and do a family conference. And, and uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be there doing a family conference on a, on a Friday night and a Saturday. And it's going to be an exciting time. I look forward to it. And uh, so I start thinking about that. I start thinking about what am I going to talk about? What am I going to preach on? How am I going to instruct people? How am I going to do the question and answer time? And all that sort of thing. And uh, so here we are on this, uh, on this Tuesday morning. And I want you to think about the family. I want you to think about your family. You say, well, I'm a family of one. Well, that's all right. Uh, who knows what God will do for you down the road, or who knows what family may have a crisis and have a need, and God will give you some information uh, today and maybe in, in more later in the week that you would be able to give them the answers they need. God wants to use you, you know, and uh, part of the problem in America today and in the world today, but especially I'm thinking of America because I'm most familiar with it, is that families are deteriorating. The, the love, the fellowship, the, the work, the genuine uh, involvement with other family members and, and looking out for the well-being of other family members seems to have diminished a great deal. And in Psalm number 128, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, a song of degrees. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. The, thy wife shall be as a faithful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about the thy table. Behold, uh, that Thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. You know what he's saying? He's saying if you really fear the Lord, your family's going to be right. And one of the reasons is because you'll know what you'll be a man who studies the scripture, who knows what the Bible says, and you will be doing the right thing things to help your family become what it ought to be, what God wants it to be, and your children will grow up to love him and to serve him and to be saved, hopefully at an early age. Uh, your wife will uh, look to you as, a, as the responsible person in the home, the spiritual leader, and uh, what a big difference that can make. So basically, he's talking about men here. And uh, in, in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13, it says this, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. You know what? There's a lot of young people, a lot of young adults today who don't seem to have any peace. They're going off in all directions. They're trying everything in the world. They're looking for something exciting. They're, they're looking for how to get rich quick. They're, uh, they're trying to impress people. They're, they're following the, the superstars or sports team or the gambling uh, circuit or whatever else it is. And, and we're losing our young people and we need to be reaching them for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, all, the ch all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Wouldn't it be wonderful if kids could be kids again? Well, we're bouncing them around. I know this COVID thing in the schools and you don't know if they're going to be open or if they're going to be closed or they're going to have to wear a mask or if they're not going to have to wear a mask. All that kind of thing going on continuously and how difficult that might be. Uh, all of a sudden, mom or dad or somebody or maybe a neighbor or the big brother or sister is at home trying to homeschool the kids on video uh, or on their tablet from school. And, and boy, what a difficult task. And my, how we need revival in our families. And Ephesians 4 and 5 give, give a lot of instructions. But I just want you to, to mention one thing I want you to think about today is that you ought to have family time together. Some people call it family devotion. Some people do it as a sit down, almost like a preaching service where dad gets up and, and expounds on the word of God, has a Bible study, that kind of thing. We never exactly did it in that manner in our home, but we met together. We had prayer. We talked about the day. We talked about, and we used Bible principles to try to instruct and help the kids and uh, tell them how to deal with the situation. Some teacher they felt like was picking on them, some other bully in the class, or they got in trouble for one thing. 
thing or another, or somebody else got in trouble, and, and I just don't think they were treated fairly. You know, kids deal with hundreds of situations, and they need an adult, a responsible, clear-thinking, biblically-founded adult to be able to counsel them and help them to see things from God's perspective. And that's part of what family devotions are all about. We used to call ours family commotions. Family commotion. Every time we get ready to do it, the kids say, oh, oh I've got to go get a drink. Oh, I've got to go to the bathroom. Oh, I've got to, uh, I'm hungry. Can we get something to eat? And on and on. And we just had to insist that, well, okay, but we're going to have this prayer time first. We just called it a prayer time as we, as we got near the end of the day. And uh, then these other things just flowed out of it. It's amazing. And the children begin to open up to us. You know, a lot of times the kids just sort of shut down. Okay, do it, get it over with. But we tried to do it in a relaxed enough manner that the kids would open up. Next thing you know, boy, they're spilling their guts about everything. <laughs> Who got in trouble and what the teacher said and all kinds of other things as well. But to have those family commotions or family devotions, whatever you'd want to call them, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and uh, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter, six, oh, that's right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, the Bible says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So God said, get this in your heart. Think about this. Don't write it off as something irrelevant or something that other people do and that you could never do this. You can do this. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk with them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on thy gates. So he's basically saying, if you're a Christian, let it show. If you're God-fearing, demonstrate that. If you believe in God, believe in Christ, have a testimony, not only to the outside world, that's important. Maybe you got a mailbox, you can put that mailbox cover on there. We had one on for a long time that taught, had John 3, 16 on it and others that we have that we swap out every now and then and those kind of things. Uh, let the people know, everybody that drives by your house ought to know that these people that live in this house profess to know God or to be Christians. They may not know you personally. They may not know what kind of testimony you have, but they see that sign. And, that, and by the way, so do your children. They see you having enough courage that you're not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ and are willing to let others know. At Christmas time, we put a big banner on the side of the house that goes from the cradle to the cross, from the cradle to the cross, and, and all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just do something, do something, and have those devotions with your kid, those family devotions, how important they are. And, uh, and notice he, he said, talk with them. He didn't say preach to them. He said, when thou sittest and, ask, talk, and you talk to your children, he didn't talk about preaching to your children or, or lining them out, all that kind of thing. Help your children to see things from a biblical perspective. Help them learn to resolve conflicts and problems biblically. And when your kid comes home and another kid's been picking on them or they've been in a fight or they've had a falling out with somebody that was a friend, uh, you need to take them to the Bible. You need to do the, uh, the research and you need to find what can I do to help my child know how to resolve a conflict, how to get along with people, that you, how, to, how to deal with uncomfortable situations and just help them. You, you help your kids, and I tell you, they will love you forever. And it won't just be that passive love. Oh, yeah, that, those are my parents. I love my parents. Not just that, but I mean, they will be looking to you as heroes and leaders and helpers in their life. Take turns reading the Bible or quoting your favorite verse. A lot of times we did that. Everybody quote your favorite verse. Tell us what it means to you. Just different things. It doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to be mundane. If you want to use a devotional book, that's well and good. Read the devotion. Maybe let each, each person take a turn reading the devotion and get that done. Uh, use a variety of prayer times. 
pray. Let your kids know you're a, you're, that you are a prayer warrior, that you are praying for people. You heard something at church about someone who had cancer or some missionary that was having trouble, and you get the next day at a meal, you sit down and say, hey, we need to pray. By the way, let's don't forget to pray for that prayer request. Having prayer requests is not just something that a church does because it's the right thing to do. It's to get the word out to God's people so that they really will pray and on and on. And your kids need to see that that's real in your life and your children. Have your children heard you pray? Have your children ever heard you pray aloud for others, for your neighbors, for the other family members, for someone that's sick, for them? Have they heard you pray for them? And uh, how important that is. So use a variety of prayer times and each one pray and just have your kids to pray. And, and then don't make fun of them if they, you know, and they'll make fun of each other. If you have two or three kids, they'll, they'll certainly take care of that end of it. You don't have to do that. But, uh, but help them, get them accustomed to bowing their head, closing their eyes and talking to the Lord. Don't be preachy, be family. Boy, how important that is. Well, that's as far as we're gonna to go today. We're talking, about, uh, we're talking about building strong families and part of building that strong family is conducting those family devotions. It shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be so ironclad that they feel like they're, it's, it's devotion prison. It's, it's not a prison but it should be something that they know they've got to attend, they've got to be part of, it's not gonna last uh, an hour. Hey, you frustrated preacher, don't make your four, three or four or five or even two or one child uh, sit there for an hour while you preach. Uh, I'm telling you, it'll backfire, it won't work. Let them see the real thing, let them see you living it out in your life every day. Well, we're gonna pray. Whoever songs would go off the air today, God bless you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege we have uh, to have time with our families, to have impact on our families, to see our families come to Christ and to serve him. Lord, help that to be the reality. I pray for that in our family, for in my family, with, with Nancy and I. And Lord, I also pray for that in my children's families. Now that they're out of the house and on their own, have families of their own, God help them to have an impact on their children, their grandchildren as they go along the way. And Father, we give you the praise. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. This is a day. 